Hey everyone, welcome back to another Safari Limited review. Today we'll be taking a look at one of their older figures. It's their 2010 Apatosaurus. This figure is still one of my favorite all-time figures from Safari. Back in 2010 when I finally saw this figure in stores, it got me really paying attention to the Wild Safari line, which ran alongside their very popular Carnegie collection. Back then I always felt the Wild Safari figures just didn't live up to the quality and accuracy of the Carnegie collection, but once I laid my hands on this Apatosaurus, I was just blown away by the quality and detail on this figure for the price. I think back then I paid just around $10 for it. I think now this figure retails for $13. It's still a great figure for the price. Another reason this figure is so special to me, I actually picked this figure up at the Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History's gift shop. Now, if you're familiar with that museum, they have an Apatosaurus skeleton. It's been standing there up until recently for over 100 years. That skeleton was described by the legendary author Neil Charles Marsh, and I've frequented that museum many times over the years. I'm always blown away by that skeleton. That's part of the reason why Apatosaurus is one of my favorite dinosaurs. But also, as of recently, that skeleton at the Peabody is now being called Brontosaurus because now there is evidence that Apatosaurus and Prontosaurus are two separate species. I don't know which side of the line you guys fall on, but I'm okay with Brontosaurus being back. So enough about my fond memories of how I got this figure. Let's dive into the review and see what makes this figure so great. Starting off with a couple quick measurements. This figure is just about 13 inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of that very whip-like tail. And it's just about four and three quarter inches tall. Now, if you look at this figure from the top, you will notice that the tail is very windy and whip-like. Now, if you measure the figure along its whole body length down to the tip of the tail, the actual length of this figure is 17 and a half inches long. So a Patasaurus was estimated between 69 and 75 feet long. So I'll put this figure somewhere in the 147 to the 150 scale range. The sculpt of this figure is pretty standard. The Apatosaurus is sculpted in a walking position. The head is slightly turned to the right, and you can see the legs on this side are in mid-stride, like the animals just plodding along. These animals really could not move that fast because they were so large and heavy. Moving on to the color scheme of this figure, it's really nothing exciting. It's mostly done in a light gray color, but you do have some darker gray shading along the pelvic shoulder and back region to break up that light gray color. And you also get a nice black highlight line going down all the way to the tip of the tail to break up the light gray from that cream coating that runs all the way along from the tip of the tail to the underside of the lower jaw. I do wish there was a little bit more to this color scheme. I don't mind the gray so much. I kind of just wish there was maybe some markings or pattern along the neck and back just to kind of break up that monotone gray. But since I like this figure so much, I'm kind of going to give it a pass on that. Now, as far as the sculpting detail, most of the detail on here is just folds and wrinkles. A lot of sauropod figures are sculpted that way. It just gives it a very elephant-like look. But the newer Safari Diplodocus actually has some very fine scale detail sculpted on it. And I do feel that since we did not get a sauropod last year from Safari, and they seem to be prioritizing redoing sauropods from the now retired Carnegie collection line. I feel like we're going to get an update to either a Patasaurus this year or a Brachiosaurus. And if they do that, I'd love to see this wrinkled look go away and go back, go with that uh, finer scale detail that they did on their 2017 Diplodocus. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at the beautiful head sculpt on this Apatosaurus. Now, if you're remotely familiar with this animal, which you should be, Apatosaurus slash Brontosaurus is a very, very popular dinosaur. You know this head has gone through a lot of changes over the years. Back when Apatosaurus was discovered, it was found without a skull, which led to a lot of reconstructions in the early 1900s to have a Camarasaurus skull or a Camarasaurus-like skull. Take, for instance, the Peabody Museum. They used elements from a Camarasaurus skull and then sculpted the rest of the skull, and man, was that skull ludicrous looking. But now we know Apatosaurus had a skull very similar to the Plodocus. You can see the skull is really well done. You can see there's a little bit of pink paint right here for the ear canal that's been sculpted in. Now, the nostrils, since this is a 10-year-old model, are sculpted on the top of the head. Now, it is believed that there was a fleshy channel and the nostrils were much more closer to the tip of the snout. If you look at the new Safari, the Plodocus, and Camarasaurus, you'll see they have that updated information, which would be nice if we got an updated Patasaurus with the correct nostril position. 
the eye is painted in gold with a black pupil, and that gold paint gives it a really nice reflective look, make, gives it that very lifelike look when you shine light upon it, and then going down to the neck, you can see a lot of folds and wrinkles, and the neck is very wide and beautifully sculpted. Patasaurus had a very bulky and thick neck, and going down to the body, you can see more of those folds and wrinkles. The uh, scapular shoulder blade is very pronounced on this. You know, if we get an update, I'd like to see a lot more beefier reconstruction of this animal and then going down to the front legs the front legs are correctly sculpted you only have the thumb claw visible and underneath you have that horseshoe shaped uh, foot that the front limbs of this animal had and then going down so we have it flipped over you got a nice cloaca slit which is always a nice touch same thing with the back feet you have just three hind claws visible the legs are very thick and muscular looking Let's get the camera to at least focus in on that. And then going down to the tail, you have a nice thick tail base, which slowly goes to a very, very whip-like tail. Love the sculpt on this tail. Definitely uh, save some space shipping with the tail being sculpted like that. But I would like to see a newer version with the tail fully stretched out because I love large, long sauropod models. All right, let's move on with some comparisons. First up is the old OG Invicte. Apatosaurus. This was one of my very first uh, dinosaur figure toys when I was a kid. And man, this, I put these Invictae figures through some hell when I was a kid. These these toys took an absolute beating. And they still look good, even though I treated them like absolute crap back then. And next up is the Papo Apatosaurus in that weird position. It's so hard to get it to... Let's see. Turn it around and... Ugh. There we go. Much better. You can see this Papa one has a very large and broad neck, and I absolutely love it about this figure. Definitely, definitely going to review this one sometime in the future, and this figure is actually considered a juvenile apatosaurus. It would be nice if Papa one day just gave us a larger adult, because the bigger the sauropod figure, the better it is in my book. And next up is another safari figure. Here is their retired, but absolutely fantastic Nigrosaurus. And next up is an animal that lived alongside a Patasaurus. Here is the Batat Stegosaurus. And I just wanted to bring out this particular Stegosaurus for a reason because I am such a fan of the Peabody Museum. This Stegosaurus is actually based on the old mount they had of Stegosaurus at that museum. It has the incorrect eight tail spikes, which is pretty cool. They're actually currently remodeling the dinosaur hall. It's supposed to take three years actually doing the whole museum and they are reconstructing this stegosaurus with the correct number of tail spikes. And here it is with the absolutely fantastic Eofauna Atlasaurus. You can see this figure just absolutely towers over this apatosaurus. And lastly, here is a nice group shot of the late Jurassic Morrison Formation dinosaurs. We have the Carnegie Collection Brachiosaurus. Safari, Camarasaurus, Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Diplodocus. Now we're only a few more dinosaurs away from completing the animals from this formation. I would love to see Safari's take on a Camptosaurus. It is a species of dinosaurs that dinosaur companies just flat out ignore. Yes, I know there is one from Collective, but it's an older figure and it looks absolutely terrible. And I really, really think we need a Camptosaurus in the Safari line and why they're at it definitely a Torvosaurus, Dryosaurus, and it just I think it's a long shot someday a Barosaurus. So now you have my Morrison formation wish list. I know a lot of people would love to see those species I mentioned made by Safari. Safari is one of the best dinosaur companies around, and I think those figures will look absolutely fantastic if they ever get around to it. So final thoughts on this Apatosaurus figure. Even though this figure is 10 years old, I still love it. Yes, there's a couple things that could be done better on it. Like, obviously, we need an update to the nostril placement. Uh, definitely a better color scheme. And like I said, I have a feeling that we're going to see an update to Apatosaurus or Brachiosaurus this year from Safari. But I still recommend you pick this figure up. It's such a great figure for the price. It's still available on Safari's website for just under $15. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to order that figure for yourself. So right now at the time of this recording is the end of August. So it'll be probably a couple more months before we see 
the new Safari reveals and hopefully we get a Sauropod this year. I really don't care what Sauropod it is as long as we get one. Last year I just felt like the line was seriously lacking that we did not get a Sauropod. I always look forward to their takes on those animals. So that will do it for the review. As always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps up the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys for the next one.